Claims are integral part of any JWT token. In this video, you will learn something about them. All the information that a JWT token holds is contained inside of the claims. What is a claim? To use a database analogy, the claim is just like a field inside of the table on the database. It's just a JSON property with a value. And both the name of the property and the value of the property are used to correctly run the identity authentication and authorization of the user. In this video, we will ignore the header claims and we will concentrate only on the payload claims. The JWT itself and the claims it contains are defined in the RFC 7519. RFC 7519 is the source of truth of everything, not the simplest to read, but it has everything. And this video is just a short summary on the claim topic. JWT claims can be divided into three categories. The registered claims, the public claims and private claims. The most important claims are of course the registered ones. The registered claims are coming straight off the RFC and their meaning and function is very strictly defined. Bear in mind, registered does not mean required. You do not have the obligation to put all of the registered claims into the token. The usage of the claims is optional. Only their meaning, their function cannot change and all the registered claims are coming directly from the RFC itself. The registered claims are ISS, it's the information of who issued the token. Subclaim, the subject is information of to whom the token was issued. Let's think of it as the user identifier. Out, Audience is the information to whom the token is intended to. For example, the token holds the information about audience A, but you are, your service is the audience B, that means the token is not for you and you should reject it. Exp as expiration is the information on when the token should expire. Any attempt to use the token after it expired should result in the unauthorized response. NBF, not before. It's the optional information that this token cannot be issued before the date. So let's say we have the option to use the token in the future. IAT, issued at, is the information of exactly when the token was issued. JTI, this is a simple one. This is the unique identifier of the token itself. There are no more registered claims. Now let's jump into the public claims. All the public claim names are coming from the public registry. And the claim is of course considered public when it's contained inside of this registry. By the way, the link to the registry is in the description of the video. And finally, we come to the private claim names. The purpose of the private claim names is that every issuer and the consumer of the JWT may agree to use their own claim names that are not part of the either registered or public claims. That means if you have a special usage that is not contained either with the registered claims or the public claims, you have the right to implement by yourself the support for this new private claim, both on the issuer of the claim and all the applications that may be consuming your tokens. However, there is no guarantee that those claims will be correctly understood outside of your system, of your applications. Even other systems might use the same claim name in a completely different way. And potentially the JWTs with the private claims might not be compatible with some of the applications. If you want JWTs issued by your issuer to be compatible with other applications, you have to ensure that your tokens contain only registered and public claims. Private claims are good only for private usage. 
And that is the full story of the JWT claims. If you would like to know more about the JWT authentication and authorization, here is the video for you. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm Paweł Spychalski and like always, happy coding!